once upon a time, in a faraway land. There was a tiny village by the name of Kamika. Legend tells of a horrible beast that threatened the residents. It also tells of the wolf that risked it all to protect them. Controlling the very fabric of existence, this wolf stood up against a beast many times its size and banished the darkness. This ethereal wolf's valent act ushered in an era of tranquility. The villagers' hearts swelled with respect and adoration of the wolf. Hey everybody, and welcome to Let's Play Okami. This is just LPs. Okami is my very first LP, so bear with me now. I really hope you enjoy this game as much as I enjoyed this game. It was an awesome game, and I'm here to share all the awesomeness with everyone watching. Okami. Now, I'm gonna start a new game. Spoiler. I've already beaten the game. So, I'm starting out fresh. For all of you guys out there watching me on YouTube. I'm not gonna be sneaking anything because that's how you, you can't do that in your first run through. Story Heidika Kamiya. Long, long ago. A tiny hamlet known as Kamika Mill lay nestled in a grove of proud and beautiful cherry blossoms. Each and every tree around the quiet burg was honored as a god. However, the village was not without its dark secrets. To satiate the appetite of Orochi, a fearsome boy dwelling cave dwelling beast, a young maiden was offered as a sacrifice at the annual festival. With a body like a mountain, and eight heads mounted on necks the size of tree trunks, its blood-red eyes alone were said to curse anyone who gazed into them. No one dared disobey the horrific beast. When the night of the sacrifice drew near, a mysterious white wolf appeared outside the village. This wolf, its coat as brilliant as snow, was dubbed Shirondo. The wolf kept a watchful eye on anyone who ventured outside the village, and made a habit of patrolling the streets at night. People assumed the wolf to be a familiar of Orochi. One villager took it upon himself to face the fearsome Shirondo. The warrior Nami attempted many times to challenge the wolf, but his attempts were thwarted by Shiranu's swift movements. Before long, the night of the accursed festival had arrived. A white plumbed arrow paled the coming sacrifice. Piercing the sky, the arrow sunk, in, sunk its shaft squarely into the the home of Nagi, the village's most beautiful maiden. Nagi, harboring a secret love for Nagi, was enraged by the sign. Determined to put an end to Orochi once and for all, Nagi traveled to the beast's cave in place of his beloved. The moon cave, a place as dark as evil itself, served as Orochi's home. As Nagi stood bravely before the entrance, a beast appeared, eyes glowing crimson upon eight four thrashing necks. Orochi stood tall before him, anxious for another sacrifice. Nagi leapt with incredible grace, swinging his blade quite valiantly. On and on he sliced, well into the moonless night. 
but Orochi's hide was like steel. The blade left nary a scratch. At long last, Nagi, his energy spent from the intense battle, dropped to his knees, fatigued and gasping for breath. He knew he was staring death in the face. It was then that the wolf appeared. As if to protect Nagi, and stood its ground before Orochi. In the darkness of the cave, the wolf's coat shone brilliantly. Alas, it was Shiranu, the wolf that dwelled outside the village. Bearing its fearsome claws, Shiranu leapt toward Orochi. Orochi reared its terrifying heads, readying its fangs for battle. The two beasts struggled wildly, thrashing in the darkness. Mysterious and terrifying, the spectacle continued. Shiranu summoned gusts of divine wind to counter Orochi's flames. As Orochi closed in on Shiranu, sharpened claws glistening, <coughs> a gigantic tree suddenly sprouted forth, shielding the wolf. Shiranu fought gallantly to gain the upper hand, however, Orochi protected by a mystical power was not easily bested. Shiranu, covered in gashes, the majestic coat dyed crimson, stood exhausted before the mighty Orochi. Orochi saw a chance to strike what would be the final blow, but Shiranu refused to give in. With this last ounce of strength, the majestic wolf gazed heavenward and unleashed a mighty howl. Suddenly, the black clouds overhead dissipated. The light from above glinted off Nagi's sword as a beacon of hope. Guided by his sword, Nagi who had been taking shelter in the shadows, stood proudly to face his adversary, channeling all his strength into his scarred and battered arms. He leapt ferociously toward Orochi, his sword poised high. The gold sword danced in his hands like a puppet on a string. One by one, Orochi's fearsome head separated from their owner. Orochi's broken body collapsed in a lake of its own blood. In that instant, the curse that plagued the villagers was lifted. As the battle subsided, the sun shone once again in the sky. Shiranu had succumbed to Orochi's poison and struggled to breathe. Nagi scooped the beast into his arms and returned to Kamiko. When they reached the village, Shiranu was no longer moving. The village elder gently stroked the wolf's head. In response, Shiranu let out a hoarse and pitiful bark, then closed its eyes and drifted off as if it had disappeared. Peace had at last returned to Kamika village. In honor of Shiranu's heroic exploits, the villagers erected a shrine and placed a statue of the wolf within it. Nagi's sword was christened Sukwayoma and placed inside the moon cave. The villagers all looked forward to an age of endless peace. However, this is not the end of the story. There is more to this tale than most people know. One hundred years had passed since Nagi and Shirani's heroic exploits. It happened so quickly that no one in the village even took notice. sword? Is this Sukoyoma, the sword that banished the dreaded Orochi? No, it couldn't be. It's just a legend, nothing but a fairy tale.
Oh, he who seeks power, he who has broken my bonds. Speak the words, I wish darkness into the world. Utter that prayer unto me and unleash my power. A horrible tragedy suddenly swept over the land. However, there was one village that seemed to escape the terrible curse. The tiny settlement of Kamika village enjoyed the protection of a sacred tree. It is here that the real story begins. Sequoia. How troublesome. This is just like the ancient prophecy of doom. What has transpired to bring about such calamity? We must act quickly. There is no time to lose. My power has diminished over the years I've spent protecting this area. I don't have much time left in this world. Emma Trisu, now is the time. We have never needed your power more. Shine your divine light upon this broken and polluted world. Let your heavenly rays become our hope as you guide us all. Oh, call me, Emma Teresa. Ah, such divine white light, such beauty and grace. The only one capable of such a wondrous spectacle is none other than our mother and the origin of all that is, Amma Teresa. How delightful to see that the Savior, whose brave sacrifice sealed away the evil demon so many years ago, has not changed one bit. Seeing you emerge after so many years spent as a statue brings happiness to my heart. Emma Teresu, gaze above you and take in the condition of the sky. Since your untimely departure from our myths, the world has succumbed to devious and vicious beasts. They have ravaged our fine and bountiful country of Nepal, but never have the circumstances been worse than they are at this very moment. Please use your powers to banish the darkness and punish those who would do us harm. Hmm? Eh? What is this? Has something stolen its way into my rope? Okay, we're gonna stop it here. But next episode, we'll figure out what's hiding in Sequoia's rope. This is Just Let's Play, Just LPs, signing off.